Welcome to Globe Capital, everyone. For those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Mike Gerbis, and I'm the CEO of a group of five organizations, including the Delphi Group and Globe, Globe Series, that are all focused on accelerating the transition to a sustainable, prosperous, and socially just future. Now, before I get started, I'd like to recognize that I'm working from my home, which is situated on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe, also known as Ottawa. And two quick um, housekeeping items. This and all sessions are being recorded and will be available on the website to all uh, attendees for a month after the conference. And also, if you're joining as a registered Globe Capital attendee, you can listen in to all sessions in either French or English uh, just by clicking on the music note icon in the bottom right corner of the stream player. So as, any, as many of you know, GLOBE is convening, has been convening influential innovators and decision makers from around the world since 1990. But boy, do things look different in 2021 compared to 1990 or even 2019, our last GLOBE Capital event. First, it's pretty tough to bring people together in person. But we've adapted, like many of you, and now we're hosting numerous virtual events, including Globe Capital. And one of the positive outcomes of this time is that the pandemic has catalyzed innovation across the country, around the world. We have new technologies, new ways of doing business, new business models. Second, there's been an awakening. In my 30 year career, I have never seen the kind of momentum and the desire to tackle climate change, advance sustainability, and regenerate our infrastructure in exciting new ways, like we are today. I think we can all agree that the global context has changed. There are new driving forces, and there's an urgency to this moment. That's why we're here. Globe Capital is focused on breaking down barriers, scaling big ideas, and turning them into action and scaling investment that is innovative and has a positive impact. Now, we're gonna miss running into you in the hallways or at one of the networking events, but we're excited to bring you a lot of different ways to connect with our Globe Capital community and our capital content. And I encourage you to try them all. Why? Because the impact and influence we all strive for doesn't happen without strong relationships partnerships. It requires public and private sector players getting together, rolling up their sleeves, and being willing to go well beyond traditional boundaries more than ever before. Now, as you'll hear in a moment, the Canada Infrastructure Bank is one of those organizations that is accelerating ideas into action with government and business partners motiva motivated by positive impact. There are new risks to be taken, shared, but doing nothing is no longer an option. This is particularly true in the infrastructure space, which has become a focal point of how we get from here today to net zero. And that's thanks in no small part to the efforts of the Canadian government and now the new US administration. This attention is long overdue. Infrastructure is fundamentally tied to our post-COVID economic recovery. It has beneficial trade implications. It will be key to creating new jobs, supporting the clean energy transformation, and most importantly, building a more resilient, sustainable economy. In fact, it can help us view climate change as a trillion dollar opportunity, as opposed to a billion dollar problem. Now, Without further ado, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce our next set of speakers who are going to tell you about one such opportunity, a large and transformational transmission project that is a game changer for Canada's largest province and the largest power market in North America. With that being said, it is my utmost privilege to introduce a longtime friend of GLOBE, a passionate and determined leader on climate change and now Sustainable Infrastructure, Canada's Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, the Honourable Catherine McKenna. 
Uh, well, thanks, Mike. It's uh, it's really great to uh, to be with you virtually. I was thinking it was just a year ago, uh, well, over a year ago, one of my last events uh, in person uh, was with you at Globe. Um, and thanks very much to you, your partners, um, uh, and to Globe Capital for everything you guys do, because it's really about the opportunity. I think sometimes people look at the negative impacts of climate change as opposed to looking at the trillion dollar opportunity. Um, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, I wanna recognize that uh, I am at my house uh, when my dogs just come by too. So hopefully she doesn't bark, um, but uh, I'm coming to you from the traditional territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe peoples. Um, I'm really happy uh, to be joined uh, by some other great folks, Aaron Corey, uh, who I guess we can't even call him new uh, CEO of the Canada Infrastructure Bank, uh, who uh, is really delivering in spades. So thank you very much, Aaron, for all of the work you do in the bank uh, as an innovative financing mechanism to actually get some really big things done, uh, including or maybe especially uh, on the climate file. Also, John Jipping, who's coming to us from Michigan, um, uh, from ITC Holdings. It's great uh, to have some, some awesome private sector partners. Um, look, this has been a, such a challenging year, and uh, I think it's especially challenging right now. Uh, we're in the uh, throes of a third wave uh, of the pandemic. It's been a really, really long year. Um, many of us are, are you homeschooling our kids uh, again? Um, and, and really just trying to keep spirits up. The focus of our government clearly has been supporting Canadians through the pandemic, um, but also really thinking about how do we build back better? And that actually means something. That's not just you know making investments to create jobs, although it is definitely about creating jobs because we need jobs and we also need economic growth. It's also being really thoughtful about how do we drive the change that we need? Uh, how do we make the investments? Uh, they're gonna pay back in spades in terms of uh, a cleaner uh, planet. Um, of course, economic opportunity um, for Canadian companies and, uh, and uh, also competitiveness is hugely important. We're competing globally. And I think that there's a huge opportunity for Canada to be punching uh, above its weight. Um, I don't have to say this to folks that are Globe, but you can go. I decided to go, go to Globe Capital's uh, homepage. Um, so I'll do some promotional, uh, do some promoting for you, Mike. But like the climate opportunity, uh, it's trillions of dollars. This is about making money, folks. Uh, it's uh, low carbon infrastructure projected to reach what? $90 trillion dollars by 2030. Um, the volume of clean tech, uh, 1.15 trillion, the value of clean tech, $1.15 trillion and ESG investing is a $30 trillion opportunity. So that's what we need to be talking about. And uh, one of the things I think hard about is how do we bring in the private sector? Uh, government can solve every problem as everyone knows. Um, there's also limit to the dollars that we can invest. Uh, and we need to be bringing in private capital and we need to be looking at uh, real opportunities, um, which is why we have the Canada Infrastructure Bank. And I think it's really hitting its stride. Uh, it uh, recently announced its three year, $10 billion growth plan, uh, which is all about building back better um, and uh, in the next three years, but of course, part of its broader $35 billion plan. And these are really key areas they're looking at. Uh, clean energy, which is what we'll be talking to about today, commercial building retrofits, agricultural irrigation, zero emission buses, and beyond. And if you look at some of the great projects that have been able to be built uh, as a result of investments um, supported by the Canada Infrastructure Bank, uh, you just have to go to Montreal. Uh, you can see well into construction, uh, the Réseau Express Metropolitain project, uh, the Infrastructure Bank's investment uh, in unleashed uh, $2.95 billion in pension fund support for this very significant transit project. Uh, they just announced another critically important project when you think about the context of the pandemic and we need everyone to have access uh, to broadband, uh, participation in the Southern Manitoba Fiber Project that unlocked private capital and will connect close to 50,000 underserved homes uh, to broadband in Southern Manitoba. Alors, c'est clair que la Banque canadienne d'infrastructure a un très important rôle à jouer pour transformer uh, notre pays, pour faire des investissements où nous allons avoir 
plus d'infrastructures grâce à la participation uh, du secteur privé. But let's talk a little bit. I won't give out the announcement. Uh, I'll leave that to, uh, to Aaron. Um, but let's talk about the context of uh, the United States. Um, I think we can be fair. It was a pretty uh, hard uh, four years, but now there is just huge opportunities to be working uh, with the U.S. And I will say with many uh, friends that uh, I had the opportunity to work with when I was Minister of Environment and Climate Change. President Biden recently announced his $2 trillion, uh, he calls it a jobs plan, uh, that investing in infrastructure is investing in, in jobs. It's also investing in climate action and building more inclusive communities. And that's something that we think hard about here. Every dollar, taxpayer dollar that's invested needs to create jobs and growth needs to tackle climate change and build more resilient communities, and uh, also needs to build more inclusive and equitable communities for everyone. And um, when you look at the opportunities for Canada and the US to work together, I think it's re we can reinforce what we're trying to do on climate action. Uh, when the, the plan that the Biden administration has put forward uh, commits to 100% clean power by 2035. 100% clean power. Right now, the U.S. is around 40% clean power, so they need to transform their energy system, as they have talked about. That's a real opportunity for Canada, because many people do not know this stat. It's a very important statistic. 80% of Canada's power of our electricity system is clean. 80%. That's a huge opportunity to partner with the United States uh, to lower emissions, which is a win for everyone because emissions knows uh, emissions know no boundaries. But of course, also to create good jobs uh, in Canada, to create growth and opportunity, and also to uh, ensure the security and resilience of our own grid. Um, certainly looking at many more opportunities uh, like the one we're announcing today uh, to work together. Um, and I think infrastructure is extremely broad. There's opportunities that are everything from the traditional roads and bridges, but also to charging networks um, and beyond. Uh, and so this is really uh, about building the future that we want, uh, about doing it together and making sure that we have Uh, with that, um, I'm going to hand it over uh, back to you. I was going to announce the errand, but I will hand it back to you to hand it over. Thanks, Mike. Great. Thank you, Minister McKenna. So good to see you again. And thank you for your ongoing leadership and passion. Uh, continue the fight. We're going to get there. Um, as, a, as Minister McKenna said, this is a huge opportunity to work with our closest partner, a neighbor in the US to drive positive change that we want, punching above our weight, increasing trade and investment, and most importantly, ensuring we do it in a way that doesn't leave anybody behind. And so I'm very delighted now to introduce Aaron Corey, Chief Executive Officer of the Canada Infrastructure Bank, who will be followed by John Tipping, EVP and COO of ITC Holdings, who are gonna tell us more about this major new investment partnership that will be good for the economy and the environment on both sides of the border. Aaron. Good morning, Mike. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much. Thank you, Minister, for the introduction. It's always nice to get to follow the Minister um, when she talks about the global opportunity. And now I get to talk about one specific project and I'm, I'm really excited to get to do so. So thank you both of you for, uh, for the intro. I uh, wish I could be in person as all of us do. I think there's something special that comes from it. Although it's nice to get to connect with so many people uh, from my basement. I'm coming to you from Toronto, which is the home to historically to many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee and the Wendat peoples. And today is a home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. And it's important to acknowledge that. Um, the, the, now to the, to the announcement itself. I, today we're here to talk about a project that I'm incredibly excited about and we're really proud of at the CIB. And that is a partnership with ITC and John will speak in a moment on an agreement in principle to invest $1.7 billion in a new transmission connection between two incredibly important power markets in Ontario and PJM in the US. This project called the Lake Erie Connector will see the CIB invest 
uh, up to $655 million to create this new corridor for trade in clean energy and grid reliability. The minister often uh, says that she thinks and speaks in threes, and we clearly went to the same public speaking school at some point because I have three points I wanna mention today of why this project is so important and why at the CIB we're so happy about it. The first one is just uh, to bring us back to something that's foundational. It's why the CIB was created, as the minister said, it is our goal to be an innovative bridge between getting infrastructure built in the public good leveraging the private sector. And infrastructure means a lot of things. It's a big word. Um, what it means for us, though, is really about outcomes. And our focus is fundamentally on delivering outcomes. And whether those outcomes are, as the minister mentioned, connecting uh, people to broadband, creating ri transit ridership for people that allows them to get to work and get home more quickly and seamlessly, economic growth, and certainly centrally to the CIB, getting us towards a net zero economy, building economic opportunity while achieving our greenhouse gas emissions goals. Those are the outcomes we care about when we build infrastructure. And that's why this project is so interesting for us. It, I, I think the expression a win-win often gets overused, but this truly is an example of that. This is a project that will allow for better grid reliability across both Ontario, uh, Ontario and the Canadian market and the US. It allows for clean power, Ontario's clean power to be exported for economic benefit and to the great benefit of greenhouse gas reduction, um, including much of that in, in the US to the benefit of our neighbors. But as, as we say, the greenhouse gases know no borders. And so that's an incredibly important feature of the project. We're creating secure and stable and sustainable electricity, which future proofs electricity grids on both sides of the border by creating this new energy corridor. And so as you look going forward at what that does economically, sustainably to environmental benefit, it's an amazing project. Ontario is a leader in low carbon energy production. So this project allows the province to export some of that non-emitting power to one of the largest power markets in the world, while also creating lots of benefit in Ontario in terms of reliability and meeting future needs in Ontario in sustainable ways. So that's, that's the outcomes that we're so excited about. And, and John and his team, of course, um, are going to be working every day on delivering those outcomes. But that's what we're really proud of uh, in terms of the CIB's involvement. My second point, just to transition, is, is on that partnership that we've got here. And the CIB is, is an investor in projects. Every single thing that we do is done in partnership with others, in partnership with other levels of government and with the private sector. And this project is no exception. Our partners at ITC and at Fortis have been collaborative, uh, persistent. This is not a short journey like any infrastructure project. Uh, I once heard an expression, someone says any project has to die once or twice before it really lives. And this project is no ex exception. It's taken perseverance on the part of the developers, but it's, it's an incredible project that they have persevered on and have been great partners on. Our colleagues in Ontario have also been extremely supportive, and I know John would echo this, but working with the regulator on the Ontario side, working with the province, brings a project like this to life. And in every large project we do, we also focus on the possibility for Indigenous participation and Indigenous benefit in the infrastructure, and this is no exception. And it's really encouraging that ITC is actively in discussions with First Nations communities and is working towards meaningful participation. And so that's a feature of this project. Again, when I talk about win-win wins that we're really excited about. And as the project moves forward towards financial close, I know that's something that all of us, all of us as partners will continue to focus on. A project like this, as I say, it's not an overnight success story and it takes great partnership and a lot of hard work to get us here. So a big thanks to uh, our partners and for, for letting us be partners with you. Um, third point I want to make, and the minister talked about some of the momentum at the CIB, the, the growth plan that we launched last fall was meant to be a reaction to the pandemic. It was meant to be a, a tool of both infrastructure development, achieving those long-term outcomes we care about, but doing so in a short ter shorter term way. This project is a great example of that by being shovel worthy and shovel ready now. And so, uh, what I would say is this is now our second investment in the last six months since the growth plan was launched in clean energy. Our first, building on our first, which was the United Battery Storage Project, the largest battery storage uh, development in Canada, one of the largest in the world. 
which again is a great story of leveraging our clean power in Canada to both uh, environmental benefit and economic benefit. And what I can tell you coming out of both of those two projects is they won't be our last. The growth plan, uh, through the growth plan, the $10 billion the minister mentioned over the next three years, 2.5 of that is dedicated towards clean power projects. Our investments in projects like Oneida Battery Storage, like the Lake Erie Connector Intertie that we're here to talk about today, are projects that have lasting impact. They'll have the benefit of jobs in the short term, but long-term economic and environmental benefit. And we are committed to doing many more of these. We have conversations active with a number of partners across the country, and I'm really excited about that. And we look forward to many more because these are the kinds of projects the CIB is here to catalyze and help make happen. Our job is to try and find projects that are fundamentally positive, positive economically and positive in terms of the outcomes and to get them over that line. And I think this, that's what we've done in partnership with ITC. And as I say, I look forward to many more of these in the months ahead. Okay, that's it for me. And I'd like to welcome John Jipping now. John is the Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer at ITC. And uh, as I say, a fantastic partner for all of this. John, over to you. Uh, thank you, Aaron. And uh, on behalf of ITC and Fortis, I'd like to congratulate you and, and the entire team at the Canada Infrastructure Bank as well as Minister McKenna for your leadership and support to reach this major milestone. Um, we are excited about this announcement and what it means for the advancement of the Lake Erie Connector. You know, since 2014, our company has been building relationships with indigenous communities, uh, demonstrating the substantial savings, the environmental and the other significant benefits that, that the project can bring. And, and working with governments and other important stakeholders to bring the project to life. Um, you know, for those who may not be familiar with our company, uh, ITC is a large independent electricity transmission company. We own, operate, and maintain over 25,000 kilometers of high voltage transmission lines in the US. We are a subsidiary of Fortis, the largest investor owned utility in Canada, headquartered in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador. We've spent years uh, assessing the value that the Lake Erie Connector can bring to Canada and advancing its development through detailed design, uh, engineering, and permitting. In fact, the, the project has its U.S. presidential permit and has been approved by Canada's energy regulator. This will be the first direct bi-directional transmission connection between Ontario and PJM. PGM is the largest electricity market in the world, and it's comprised of 13 Midwest and Mid-Atlantic states. It's going to give Ontario and Canada access to opportunities it's never had before. Um, it will place Ontario at the center of a new regional trading hub, enabling the province to export power in, in times of surplus and derive higher value for that clean energy. Uh, the project will also provide a new path to source low-cost non-emitting power for Ontario businesses and homes in times of need. The, the, new, the new inner tie will open direct trade between Ontario and the largest and most competitive U.S. electricity market, creating net savings for Ontario homes and businesses of over $100 million annually and nearly $4 billion over the life of the project. And as we've talked a little bit about already today, the, the the Lake Erie Connector is also projected to reduce carbon emissions by approximately 2 million tons per year. Wow. Um, we very much look forward to delivering this innovative project and the financial, environmental, and system benefits it will bring to Ontario. The, the project um, is, um, is ready to go, as to say, shovel ready. So let me summarize a little bit. Um, the, the Lake Erie Connector will help accelerate and continue Ontario's economic recovery. Globally and within Canada, there is widespread recognition that strategic investments in electricity infrastructure bring about a number of great outcomes. Um, you know, it's, it's gonna boost employment, deliver savings on energy bills, reduce carbon emissions and improve power grid reliability well into the future. Uh, today's announcement of CIB's investment is a clear reflection that those benefits are recognized and supported. 
Our team is appreciative of and, and excited about this partnership with the Canada Infrastructure Bank and what it means for the future. Uh, CIB support provides significant additional benefits that will all flow directly to Ontario's electricity customers. We remain fully committed to continuing to work with the federal and provincial governments to obtain the final approvals and agreements necessary uh, to complete the Lake Erie Connector and, and deliver on these many benefits uh, to all Ontarians. So I just want to thank you again for this opportunity, and I'm going to turn it back to Mike. Wow, great. Thank you so much, Aaron and John. Boy, the Lake Erie Connector Project is truly a game-changing infrastructure investment. And as Aaron said, the out, it's outcome-based and it's a win-win-win. I mean, Ontario will be able to export its clean, non-emitting power to one of the largest power markets in the world so that Canada benefits not only economically, but we drive down those greenhouse gas emissions and cre create jobs and, and uh, enhance uh, trade and investment. So that, this is great news at a time when I know we all need some. Thanks for uh, sharing the exciting announcement with us today. And we look forward to getting future updates on the progress of the Lake Erie Connector Project. Thank you again, Minister McKenna, Aaron, John, and the Canada Infrastructure Bank, and to all of those of you who are in attendance today. Uh, before I send the attendees on your way to enjoy the rest of Globe Capital, I'd just like to point out a few can't miss sessions over the next three days. Uh, first, you can hear more from the Canada Infrastructure Bank uh, when John Casala, uh, Chief Investment Officer, participates in the Reimagining Our Infrastructure session on Thursday, April 15th. Uh, this session will also feature a special announcement from Indigenous Clean Energy, who will be launching a major report on energy efficient uh, investment for Indigenous homes. I'd also like you to encourage, or I'd also encourage you to check out exciting updates and announcements uh, from the Natural Gas Innovation Fund and Foresight today at 1.40 to 1.50 uh, p.m. Eastern time and join them for their hosted networking sessions tomorrow to learn more. And of course, uh, there are numerous other rich sessions on numerous topics from getting us to net zero to our countdown to COP26 closing plenary. And most importantly, I want you to try and have as much fun as you can. Uh, join us at one of the many hosted networking sessions. You can uh, pop in and out, uh, download the Spotify playlist or even add to it if you have a favorite uh, a song that inspires you and join the Capital Strava Club, particularly for all those runners, walkers, cyclists and swimmers. There, there'll even be prizes. So. Please everyone enjoy the first ever virtual Globe Capital. And if I don't see you, please drop me a line and let's connect after the event. Stay safe, everyone. Stay hopeful and stay positive. We're almost through this. All the best. Have a great week. Take care.